of our program is a basic research program. And basic research continues to be a critical part in that, in that pipeline to new discoveries and new therapies. A lot of the drugs that are in the clinic right now are directly derived from basic research. So at SDBRI what we do is we uh, use basic research to identify stages in the disease process towards cancer and diabetes. And then we can um, design treatments that interrupt those processes. Well we work on type 1 and type 2 diabetes and HIV, wasting syndrome and cancer. It does seem unusual that we have so many different types of experts in, in so many different diseases, but as it happens, there's a lot of overlap between these diseases. So for example, people who are obese are, as well as being very susceptible to various complications including type 2 diabetes, these patients are also very susceptible to cancer. And then all of those diseases in their chronic states are very sensitive to um, a very debilitating severe muscle wasting syndrome called cachexia. And so what we do is we work together on joint projects and try to establish and understand processes that will lead from one disease to another. My work focuses on what we call the tumor microenvironment. As you may know, a cancer, a tumor, consists of the bad cells, the cancer cells, but it also has many normal cell types as well as normal protein matrices as well as blood vessels and so on in it, normal tissue elements. And there is actually a lot of communication going on between the cancer cells and those normal elements. And the cancer cells can influence these normal elements and the normal cells or the normal tissue can influence the cancer in making it more invasive and more aggressive and, you know, contribute to what we call tumor progression. But first, before we can try to really interrupt it, we have to understand it. So our first aim is to study some processes that we feel are important in that whole um, crosstalk and then hone in on certain molecules, in our case cell surface receptors, that we can then uh, develop as targets. We get blood samples from patients who have cancer and who are wasting and just healthy patients. And uh, we process this blood to get immune cells out of the blood. And then we uh, use specialized tags, which are known as antibodies, uh, to tag these cells. And then we run them through this machine called the flow cytometer. And we see different patterns of, that are our proteins that are expressed on these cells. We compare these patterns between the healthy individuals, the people who have cancer, and people who have cancer and are also wasting. And then we'll also do this in diabetes. So that helps us identify patterns that are odd, and then we know, hey, this, this doesn't look as it looks in the healthy. So this is a potential target that we can use. We study adipose tissue in the lab and the biology of the, of the adipose tissue and how adipose tissue becomes inflamed and dysfunctional during weight gain. So in our work we have discovered a number of unique molecules and pathways that contribute to adipose inflammation and dysfunction during obesity. So we believe that some of these molecules and pathways are unique targets for the development of drugs to treat diabetes. So type 2 diabetes takes a huge toll on people's lives. I myself lost my dad to complications of type 2 diabetes. Clearly new approaches are needed to complement the existing ones or to potentially replace some of them. So it is my hope that the unique biological targets that we have discovered in our lab can be translated into medicines that can treat type 2 diabetes more effectively, which I hope can be accomplished in the near future. So basically what we're trying to do is find a way to train the human body to defend itself from exposure to the AIDS virus and basically to do this um, we're attempting to isolate a key component from the surface of the HIV virus um, and use that as a vaccine to try to induce uh, virus fighting antibody responses in the human body so that they're prepared uh, if they are unfortunate enough to be exposed to the virus. What we plan to do together with Dr. Davis is monitor the immune state of 
the volunteers that we're going to vaccinate before they get vaccinated and then correlate that with the responses that develop after vaccination and by doing that we can determine a link between good and bad responses and then we can work backwards and find a way hopefully to make it so that all patients develop responses reliably so we've got a vaccine that can work universally. San Diego Biomedical Research Institute has a really positive environment and I really like the emphasis on collaboration and communication. So I think like even though um, the different research groups um, collaborate with each other and that's something that's really important, everyone regardless of their position, they can also share their ideas and make valuable contributions and I think that's something that makes San Diego Biomedical Research Institute really unique. And um, I also really appreciate the gender and cultural diversity in the faculty and that's something that makes uh, SCBRI really like, special and welcoming to me. The overall goal of the Institute is to increase and accelerate the research that we're doing by communicating better with each other. So what we found is that by having open and regular dialogue between scientists in these different research areas, it gives us a new perspective on our own research. And, and the effect of that is, has been um, unexpectedly to identify some new avenues of research that we hope will benefit the, the patient population.